Good morning and welcome to our 11 o'clock service. It's again a joy to have you with us and uh, I trust that it's been a good week for you and that you've been aware of the grace and the love of God, not only around you, but also around your loved ones and your neighbours and your friends as we walk through these very different days. Well, we are going to celebrate Jesus this morning. This meeting is all about him and we want to ask you to allow faith and hope and the love of God to be truly shed abroad in your heart. Uh, as a fellowship, we are meeting around our screens, not able to meet in our building in Station Road, but even in these circumstances, we share several things that are permanent, that nothing and no one can rob from our hearts. What are they? Number one, the joy of knowing Jesus. Number two, the assurance that we belong to Him. And number three, that just as we are united with God, we are also united together. We have one faith, one hope, one Lord, and we share the same Spirit. So as we encounter Christ in these next few moments, I pray that you will truly be aware of His manifest presence resting upon you. Let's pray together, and then we'll begin a time of praise and worship. Our gracious, loving Father, we thank you this morning for the eternal truth that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. Lord, thank you for the assurance that we have in our hearts that does not rest upon anything that can change or can be taken away from us. Our hope and assurance rests upon the fact that you are eternal, that you change not, and that you remain the same. We thank you, Lord, that we can come before you with hearts in touch with you, on fire with your spirit. And we thank you for your faithfulness, that in these days when there are so many things we're unsure of, we can be sure of this one thing. You are a faithful, gracious, loving Father. And Lord, in all our prayers and our declarations today, we ask that Jesus would be honoured and Jesus would be glorified. I pray, Father, that we would have our hearts enriched with the depth of Jesus, that the richness of his glory would be imparted to us as we sit at your feet. And that, Lord, eternal change will happen in many hearts as we hear your word. Now, Lord Jesus, we've come to worship you. We've come to honour you and to thank you for the greatest miracle of, all, miracle of all that can happen in the human heart. Lord Jesus, we adore you. We exalt you and you alone. And, Lord, we thank you as we sing our songs and express our prayers and hear your word, we pray that you will be the centre of all things in this time we spend together. Bless your people, Lord. Love your people. Minister to your people. We're your creation. We need you. We long for you. And we pray that, Father, in every home represented, Lord Jesus, you would be in total control of all things as we spend this time together for your glory in Jesus' name. Praises rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to strength to face the day and in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away Hosanna Come have your way among us 
today And in your presence All our fears are washed away Washed away Peter 1 verse 13 Therefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The Enduring Word. Since you have purified your souls and obeyed the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because, all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is a flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flowers fall away, but the word of the laws endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted, that the Lord is gracious. Amen. Morning, church. Morning, church. Hi. Nice to be with you this bright Sunday morning um, from lovely sunny Ireland. Sylvia joined me just uh, yesterday, uh, spent the weekend. We just thought it would be great to kind of, um, you know, appreciate you guys together and uh, just also appreciate what the lord is doing at this time yeah just kind of thought about you know what's been going on you know i know a lot of people are kind of curious about what's going on in the hospitals just so that we can know how to pray and how to bring people you know uh all the frontline staff before the lord so maybe just want to share with people basically yes i'm sure that you would have read in the papers and watched on the news um, about uh, how stretched uh, health workers are at the moment and other key workers in general, but in particular about uh, the lack of protective equipment. Some have and a lot don't have. Um, so there is a real uh, anxiety, certainly amongst medics, about uh, you know, 
they're going into work without the the uh, required protection and um, whether they're going to get infected, what's going to happen to them. You would also have read in the news about uh, health workers that have died on the front line whilst at work, caring for uh, people infected with the, the COVID virus. We've had GPs and nurses and uh, consultant staff, healthcare assistants uh, across uh, you know, the UK who have died. There are also challenges I'm aware of, uh, you know, medics who have to make life and death decisions regarding uh, people who they admit in a critically ill um, condition um, and a, a lot of anxiety uh, around that. Um, I know that the key workers, even across, across uh, uh, sectors, uh, are stretched. So really it's just to uphold them in prayer. Mm -hmm. You know that the Lord will strengthen them at this time. Yes. Keep them well. Keep them safe. Uh, grant them wisdom as they make these uh, decisions. Like I said, regarding life and death, treatment decisions, all sorts of decisions that they are that they are yeah. making. Yeah. That's um, that's really quite um, a lot of stuff to bring before the Lord. But I think it's it's nice to just kind of bring all the key workers, just like Sylvia said people in front line and also to remember there are so many other people who are in front line who are not medics uh, just at this time I think it's appropriate to bring them before the Lord and also to remember our Prime Minister Boris Johnson at this time thank God he's out of hospital we're hoping that he'll be back, back at work in a few days uh, so I think it's just appropriate to just bring all this before the Lord our Father and our Lord we thank you Lord we give you praise we give you honor we give you adoration we bless your name oh lord Lord, we just thank you lord for this season of our life this season of the life of the world this season of events lord your word said in all things we should give thanks and we think it's appropriate because we can only imagine how much worse things would have been if not for your grace oh lord your preserving grace and your protective grace oh lord but we, you know, we've got projections of how bad things could be. But, you know, we're, we're convinced that the only thing that has stemmed tide has been your grace, O oh Lord, and your love and your faithfulness. Therefore, Father, we thank you. Thank you for this time, O oh Lord. But thank you that we can even continue to enjoy fellowship together, even from across the world, across the cities, O oh Lord. It's just really a testament to your faithfulness, O oh Lord. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for what you're birthing in this season, Lord, and what we know will come out of this experience, not just for the church, but for the whole world. But more importantly, Lord, we want to pray for wisdom for the church leaders in this time, so that we may know, oh Lord, what, how to pray and how to intercede, oh Lord, at such a time as this, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just exalt your name. We ask, Lord, for that divine in enablement, divine insight, the spirit of discernment, O oh Lord, that we may know how to really stand in the gap at this time. And, you know, stand in courage and our eyes fixed and trusting in you. Lord, we just commit the whole fellowship into your hands. Thank you for sustaining us all, O oh Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you will continue to be God in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Didn't want heaven without us, so dear. 
to the Word of God again this morning and uh, I just love the truth of the Bible and how the Scripture can instruct us in the wisdom and the knowledge of God. Let me remind you of our subject last Sunday. I highlighted that the Word of God is like a seed planted in your life and it needs to land on hearts that protect that seed. So we protect uh, the Word of God in our spirit, our heart and mind, uh, so it is not compromised by unbelief, doubt and fear. Now, as we come to the passage of Scripture again today from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13, all the way through to chapter 2, verse 3, you will find that we return to that same subject again, that the Word of God, under the anointing of the Spirit, comes into your life and it is planted in your heart and mind. And the Bible here explains that that is the imperishable seed of God. And that seed planted in your life is what permeates all the way through to bring transformation 
in who you are and the life that you are living. But not only does it bring transformation in this life, the, this passage of Scripture explains that it is the eternal Word of God and that eternal Word of God is the assurance of the salvation of our souls. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. It's wonderful to know that we are people who belong to God. Now, I'm addressing people who believe, those in this passage of Scripture that are described as being born again by the imperishable seed of God. Uh, but I'm also addressing those who are searching and those who are seeking God in these days of uncertainty. Well, I love this passage of Scripture because it begins with several truths imparted immediately. Number one, prepare your mind for action. You know, the enemy knows how to influence the human mind with fear. And in these days of uncertainty, it may be that you've been building your life on things that are transient, things that are not a firm foundation. And so here he says, uh, set your hope on the grace of God that will be revealed at the coming of the Lord. And so we immediately notice two things. Firstly, in this life, we have to have the permanency of building upon God's Word. And that takes set, it means we have to set our minds ready for action and to position our mind in the right place, to position our hearing and our seeing, as we were looking last week, in such a way that we can hear from heaven and we can hear from God. And at the same time as living with an assurance in our mind, concerning the things of God, we also need to live in the light of his coming. So uh, prepare your mind for action today because that's where the battlefield is. That's where the enemy comes to plant seeds of fear or uncertainty and doubt in these days that are so different. But thanks be to God, by the revelation of Christ in our hearts and minds, we have the knowledge of God. This passage says that we are no longer living in ignorance, that we're not ignorant to the ways of God, that we've grown in our understanding and the knowledge of God. And we know that we have to be active in our thinking, active in the way that we see things and hear things so that we can put the permanent building in our lives that God requires in these days. Well, this morning I want to talk to you uh, as quickly as I can about four things that will have a real impact upon your life. Firstly, reverent fear. Secondly, rebirth. Thirdly, redemption. And fourthly, the action we must take, rid yourself of the old way of life. Passed down from perhaps parents who never knew God passed down, which is regarded as the empty way of life and coming to a place where we can live in such a way that honours God. Well, let me firstly come to the, the truth that in this generation, we have moved away from possessing reverent fear of God. You'll find it in that passage of Scripture that we must be filled with the reverent fear of God. What does that mean? Well, it doesn't speak about us being filled with intrepidation, uh, uh, cowering away from God, because the Bible says that by faith we can approach the throne of God with confidence because we're covered by the blood of Jesus and we're covered under his grace. But what it does mean is that we have a generation and a society that have lost the awareness and lost the respect and lost the recognition of the existence of God. And the moment that a human society moves away from recognition of the existence of God, we're back in that place where man lives by his own views, his own strong opinions, and he does what seems right in his own eyes. And that brings disaster and the consequences in, in, in like the days that we're living in now. And so reverent fear of God, that's a place we need to return to. Recognition of who he is, 
Who is he? He is our creator. He's our saviour. He's the eternal one. He's the one who has always been, the Alpha and Omega, the one who is without beginning and without end. And the moment that we acknowledge who he is, then the challenge that comes to us is that we must respect, we must honour, and we must find out what pleases God in life. And so, friends, this morning, I am drawing our attention to the truth that we need to see a returning to the reverent fear of God, that there would be a sense of awe in our families and in our homes of just how awesome God truly is, and that in our respect of him, we would need to find out what pleases him in the way that we live. And then secondly, I want to talk about rebirth because This passage of scripture speaks about the fact that we must be born again of the imperishable seed of God, seed of God. That means that God puts his eternal seed, which is Jesus, planted in our lives as Saviour and Lord. And the fact that Christ has come, the seed of God, in our new birth experience of the Spirit, The fact that he has entered our hearts and is indwelling us is the absolute assurance of God that we shall rise to eternal life. Hallelujah. You know, there's an amazing chapter in 1 Corinthians and it's the passage that many of us as pastors and leaders use to read at Thanksgiving services and celebration service for those who've passed into the presence of God. And in that passage of scripture, it also talks about imperishable seed. It talks about uh, immortality. There's a comparison between the imperishable and the perishable, between the temporary and the eternal, between uh, the mortal and immortality. And I love this because it speaks of the truth that Adam, who was the first man created in the image of God, He became a living being when God breathed his breath into him. And then it talks about the second and last Adam, which is Jesus Christ, who is a life-giving spirit. And in the same verses, it says that just as we, as humanity, has borne the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we also bear the likeness of the heavenly man. And with that, this will only be experienced by us being born again of the imperishable seed of God. And we receive that by faith. And we receive that through the grace of God. Because that passage of scripture in Peter explains that we cannot be saved, we cannot uh, find real life in Christ through the temporary things such as silver and gold. And that's a reference to the truth that we cannot earn our salvation. We cannot do enough to please God, to somehow find that the balances are weighed in such a way that we can be saved and know eternal life. No, that's not the Bible way. The truth of God's word reveals that we are saved by one thing and one thing alone. We are saved by the mercy and the grace of God. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful to know that that can be a truth in our hearts and in our lives in these days of uncertainty, that we can build on the permanency of what God has done through Jesus Christ. And so even in this passage of scripture in Peter, it explains that we are saved by the blood of the perfect, spotless, blameless Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we are saved by being born again. Remember the story again in John's Gospel in chapter 3 where the religious man came and asked about the kingdom of God and Jesus explained to him, no man can come into the kingdom of God unless he is born again by the Spirit. 
Ah, oh, my friend, what a great joy it would be to hear your news on email, to see where you could say to me, Pastor Paul, I experienced the new birth of salvation as you preached under the anointing of the Spirit on this Sunday. I'd love to hear from you. And you know, that leads perfectly into the story of redemption. Now, redemption, the word itself means that by the ransom payment of Christ, we are released from several things. Firstly, we are released because of what Christ has done from sin and death. He bore our sins upon the tree and he overcame death. He rose again on the third day. And that is the power of the gospel itself, that Christ died and Christ has risen. But not only are we released from sin and death, although some may still die the physical death, I want to tell you that we're also released from the power of Satan and separation from God. How awesome it is to know that we can know deliverance in our life and everything that that brings, the freedom and joy to live the life that God has, God has called us to live. And then next, it releases us from the empty way of life handed down. Well, friends, I don't know your upbringing, your background. It may well be that you were brought up in a Christian home with loving parents that shared the good news and taught you in the ways of God. But it may be that you experienced the opposite of that, where you were brought up in a family where there was no knowledge of God and you were not taught the scriptures as I was, as a young boy and a young man. And if that's the case, then we need Jesus to set you free from the empty way of life that's been passed on to you. I think it's important that I recognise that right now in the world in which we're living, we have removed God from society. We've removed him from our schools. We've removed him from our education system. We're removing him from our government. And we are sowing confusion into the hearts and minds of children. They no longer know who they are. In fact, we're teaching them error and the ways that are not pleasing to God. And so there needs to be returning to reverent fear. There needs to be a returning to the awareness that we need to respect and honour who God is. There needs to be a returning to the awareness that we must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. And thirdly, there must be real knowledge that only through the blood of Jesus, there is the redemption, the release through the ransom once for all payment of Christ on the cross, but also to rise in faith with the assurance and the knowledge of the permanent things that God has done, which you can build your life upon that he rose again on the third day as Saviour and Lord. Well, friends, I'm balancing the message of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 with 1 Peter chapter 1 and onwards. And in these passages of Scripture, you will find there is the challenge. And I believe it's a challenge very much relevant for the days in which we are living right now. Because 1 Peter talks about the fact that we need to set our hope upon the grace of God that will be given and revealed to us at the coming of the Lord when he's revealed. But also 1 Corinthians chapter 15 introduces another element which I've been speaking of and teaching of on over the last few weeks. It speaks about the fact that a mystery has been made known. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in the twinkling of an eye at the coming of the Lord. Well, friends, what that tells us is that there is a moment set in time in the calendar and agenda of God 
Even before the creation and the foundation of the world, this time was set by God. And God the Father knows there is going to come a day when he will turn to the Son and say, it's time. It's time. It's time for his return. It's time for his coming. And right now around the world, we can see the world stage is being set for certain prophetic things to take place. And I'm going to be speaking about those things over the next coming Sundays as we glean from the word of truth. But what it does tell us is that there is a time set by God the Father when he will wind everything up and the perishable will be clothed with the imperishable, the mortal with the immortality. And death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. Well, as I move to a close this morning, I want to talk to you about the fact that there is action we must take. Not only must we have our minds set for action, set on the things of God, but we must also have our lives set in a certain place as we wait and watch for the coming of the Lord. Well, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, it talks about the fact that we must rid ourselves of our old way of life. That the things that we used to do, we cease doing. The things that were not involving God in our life have been laid aside and He has become our Lord, not only our Saviour, but as our Lord. So it says, be alert, be full of self-control, rid yourself of all malice, rid yourself of deceit, rid yourself of the old way that you used to live and allow God to come into the very centre of your being by His Spirit and empower you to live the Christian life. And then in 1 Corinthians 15, it tells us to stand. Hallelujah. To stand and not move away from the truth. Let nothing move you. What a great word to hear this morning. When everything is so uncertain, when we cannot build on the permanency of earthly things, and we never should have, when that which has been stable has been removed from us. And as the word says, when everything that can be shaken is being shaken, the word of the Lord comes to you this morning for you, for your house and your family. And it says, stand, let nothing move you. And then it goes on to say, always give yourselves fully to the work of God. Well, friend, whatever God has called you to do, in whatever way you can in these days of change, stand and do what God has called you to do. His hand is upon your life. You've been saved. You've been born again by the imperishable seed of God. And that is the assurance that whether you are transformed at the coming of the Lord or you are raised from the grave, you will be with the Lord of glory forever. Well, until that day comes, may we continue to live a life that pleases God for His glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust. Surrender all 
several things as we close today. Um, firstly, we'd love to hear from you. Please send your messages into admin at hicc.org. And then we would like to invite you to connect in a deeper way with us. And if you would like that again, email a request in and our technical team will be delighted to respond and help you, guiding you how that you can move your relationship forward with us as a fellowship and a ministry. Well, I think it'd be right if we now bow our heads before the Lord and commit this week into his hands. And so Lord, as we close our service today, we thank you for the inspiration of your spirit. We thank you for the instruction of your word. And we thank you for the awareness of your divine presence. Lord, we commit this week into your hands. We don't know what it holds but we know that you hold our time and our lives in your hands. Lord Jesus, we entrust our future to you. And Lord, we pray that over these coming days, you will move by your spirit and that you will bring healing, that you will bring restoration and that Lord, your peace will reign. Again, we thank you for every person involved in the care and the ministry of our NHS and in all spheres of service that are happening in these days. Lord, we pray your blessing and your strength and your mercy to rest upon all. But above all, Lord, we pray in these critical days, we will see the move and the stirring of your spirit and more and more people will find you as their Saviour and their Lord. Thank you for all that have taken part today. Bless them, bless their homes and their families. And we pray for the wider body of Jesus right around the world, that your glory would abide and that, Lord, you would strengthen us to be faithful in all things. To you 
be all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen.